Hello, gentles and ladymen. I'm Ulan the Bison, and I am joined by my good friend Steven. What's up, dude? What's up? We're doing the tier list for my favorite thing in the game. Why Why do you sound like that? I, I was doing a funny voice, I don't know. Okay, you, you sounded kind of like a Kayaba Akihiko in Sword Art Online Abridged when he's like trying to reference... Uh, when he's trying to reference... Uh, I don't know what he's trying to reference at the end of the, at the end of the show. Never mind. Well, the, 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 this whole intro yeah. just just fucks. We just flubs this whole intro, but it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah, shall we start again? <laughs> no, no, we're we're gonna roll with it. We're doing the artillery tier list today. Uh, yes. Now I've already made a video going over how I, I rank things, but I did forget to mention that my tier lists are weighted around the B rank. Uh, which means the B is where solid, good quality units that are uh, uh, th that are purposeful and do their job, but not exceptional, go. Uh, and that's going to cause us to be quite a bit more harsh uh, when it comes to tier lists than a lot of other people will do, which will result in them having lots and lots of A tiers, and we want to try to keep that to a minimum, even if the canon class in particular is is uh, pretty pretty heavily skewed usually in my lists, even as far as my own lists go. Uh, Steven is here, of course, to, uh, tell me I'm stupid when, when I make mistakes, and also give his own opinion, <laughs> and stuff like that. And I don't yep. think there's anything else to go over, so let's hop right into it. Where do you want to start? Should we start with, uh, just the good old Falconet? Yeah, let's go ahead and start off with the good old Falconet. Alright, uh, I can't see anywhere to put the Falconet other than A tier. Simply put, yeah. it's... The poster boy of Falconets, and it's one of the best. The two Falconet shipment in H3 is widely regarded as one of, if not the best shipments in the game. Uh, it is usually the reason that people fast fortress, and you are considered to be at a disadvantage if you don't have a two Falconet shipment. Um, now, this is to represent all European civilizations with Falconets, except for uh, Germany and Malta. Germany and Malta don't have the two Falk ship, but neither does Dutch, but they don't care because they can just afford them. Yeah. Uh, it's the poster boy. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I I can't find any fault in that. Like, yeah, it is it is the reason you go to age three for most situations. It's the backbone of every semi FF or FF strategy, unless you're Unless you're Germany, basically. Yeah. It is that center point. It is what you're going for. So while it is the standard... Or I would argue it is the standard artillery in the game, but it is such a huge power spike in comparison to everything we, we're going to go over. Like, yes, we're going to go over I'm, through this list there. I almost have half a mind to put in the S tier. I almost have half a mind to put in the S tier. I think it still belongs in A, just as there are... Units that are better, but and we'll get more into those later. But it's I think there it is it is still standard. It is the fixation, and we you know we can reevaluate these as yeah, we go through the process. We, we will. But I, I'm, I'd say A for now. Like A is the right place to put it. Like it, it may be the standard Falcon, standard artillery. But given how influential it is on the entire gameplay of the game yeah it, it's solid a tier here and uh while we're on the topic of germany not being the the, the general goal for uh for falcon that's probably because we go ahead and put that in c tier unless you have any yeah no i completely agree with that one at that the, without the two falc shipment like Almost no one has the infinite one falconet shipment for germany in their deck because yeah, it's, it's so bad it's it's just, like, yes, you get three Ulans and a Falk, but that's not a composition you ever want, realistically. Like, no one says, oh, yeah, go Hus Cannon. <laughs> that's, like, that's a very good that, point. That is, that is not your combination. I never so thought it, about a, that, but that's very true. It, it is a inherently weak shipment, and there's far better things to go for as Germany. So, absolutely C tier, maybe even a D tier for, for Germany. Uh, I was going to put the Ethiopian and African Falconet into D tier. Uh, they, oh, yeah, They cost right. heavy influence, and you have to buy a tech. Now, granted, this has gotten a lot better recently with the new March patch, uh, because they, yes. like, 
halved the cost and the research time for this tech uh, that allows you to get cannons, which is a really big deal for House and Ethiopia. The fact of the matter is yeah. you still have to have that tech, and they do cost influence, which is very, very pricey. Yes, it is. But yeah, I completely agree with that, okay. that placement, so yes. So here's an interesting question. Where would you put the Malta Falconet? The Malta Falconet? Ooh. Because Falconets do play a pretty significant way. part in Malta's econ in, in Malta's military, uh, as do as does artillery and explosions in general. Uh, but they don't have a two Falk shipment, so you can't really fast fortress into them. Uh, th yeah. And it's also particularly important for Malta because they actually don't have uh, heavy uh, heavy cannons. Uh, they don't have horse artillery. Yeah. So they don't have horse artillery. So the the falconet is uh, more significant to them. I think we it, 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 it could fit into B tier personally. Yeah, I, I would say B tier. B, B tier is appropriate for that. It is what they're relying on, but it lacks the oomph that you get out of a two falc shipment. Yeah. All right, so uh, what do you want to cover? Should we go over all of the Falk equivalents before we before before we do anything else? That, yeah, I think that's a good place to start. I think that's a good one. To all right, start let's, with the Falk equivalent. Let's do organ guns. Where do you put these? Uh, if we're talking before the patch a couple months ago, I'd be talking D or you know into F tier, honestly. But Post patch, I'd say we're probably looking at honestly just a B. They do a good job, and with the buffs that they got in that patch, giving them more of that splash damage, more of the the what you'd want to see. I, I, it's a shorter range. Well, they're it's not actually as... longer range than Gatling guns. They have a twenty oh. range, the same as the Falk. Okay, yeah, I would, I would say a solid B tier for organ guns at current. And what they is, do have a, they, they do have a card that's pretty equivalent to coffee mill guns, and now that coffee mill guns is an age four, the organ gun and the coffee mill gun are even more comparable now. Uh, the yeah. the organ gun upgrade card isn't quite as good. Uh, they have longer range and a teensy bit more damage than Gatling guns, but they're also more expensive. Uh, they yeah. cost four hundred coin a piece as opposed to the three fifty coin a piece for the Gatling guns, which is not. It doesn't sound like a huge deal, but it really, really is. Uh, yeah, and they there's also, another aspect here, which is the snaring that you get on Gatlings. They also don't pair as well with Musketeers as Gatling guns do with regulars. Yeah. Um, so I, th yeah, I think so I would say they, they do a very solid job. You get a shipment of three of them in, in H3, yeah. which is really nice, although it does cost like 250 coin, I think. Or 200 mm -hmm. coin, something like that. But I think it's a very serviceable. Uh, it's a very serviceable cannon. Uh, we might lower it depending on how everything turns out, uh, but I think that's a good spot for it. Yeah. Okay, now uh, let's talk about Gatling guns. <laughs> uh, I love. Now, if Gatling. we were talking before, if we were talking before this patch, it is S tier. Yeah, it would. It would like... probably be. I, I'd probably put it at the top of A personally, but yeah, it, it, rightfully it wouldn't go in S. I still think it is at yeah. the top of A personally. Um, I, I would say I, I always used Gatling guns, and I rarely ever felt the need to send coffee mill guns. I did sometimes, depending on how late the game goes, but it was never a goal for me. But you get, uh, just like Portugal, you get a shipment of three of these guys, but unlike Portugal, that shipment is free, and it's also infinite, so you can send two after that if you want. I don't recommend sending yeah. more than twice, though. <laughs> Yeah, unless you're starting to go really late game, it's not you don't get value at that point. Yeah. But yeah, it is a solid top of A tier if coffee mill guns hadn't been, quite frankly, as much as I love the unit as USA main, rightfully nerfed having it moved to age four. <laughs> it's it a top of A tier because like we were doing the direct comparison of organ guns there. But they have it, shorter range and a little bit less damage, but they're so cheap. They're so cheap. They're so cheap. And there is that, like, the fact of the matter is, coffee mill guns, like, if you end up going industrial, it's an incredibly good card. Like, I did not take it out of any of my decks. I just left it because it's still an incredible card. And you have that snaring effect that you get from Gatlings, which, it, I mean, it's no, they're no longer death to cavalry but it's still 
does a really good contain Actually, effect. Yeah, I, effect I think, I, I, the thing is, yeah, they, they used to shred cavalry, which is so funny. Yes. Uh, they used to only be able to counter them with Colburns, which granted, they do get one shot by Colburns. I get one um, shot. Which is in, in every age, too, which is really not great. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're any as good Colburn micro, your Gatlings are just fucked. Uh, yes. But the, there was a point where, like, you could throw a billion goons at them, and coffee mill guns would not care. And that, yeah. That, that, that's not any more... It, it is... I, I admit it was S tier, and I think I ranked them lower than I should have in my uh, in my previous tier list, and that they should have been in the S tier. They, they're rightfully in A tier now. I would still prefer to have them over Falconets, because they are so yes. good. The three Gatling gun shipment is so good at shredding infantry masses. In a ways, in, yeah. in ways that the two Falk shipment just isn't. It really, really synergizes well with the USA's, you know, quality that all of its shipments are typically more powerful. So getting that three Gatling shipment is like in any any situation, I would rather get a two Gat get the three Gatling over the two Falk. They're not even close. There are a couple special cases where, like, the Gatling guns just don't perform. Um, yes. There, uh, there, like, there's a couple of very specific situations. Um, what, what, one of the, the the biggest ones I can think of is um, Ethiopia players can get the Somali uh, the, the Somali Darud militia. Uh, mm -hmm. Those dudes have like 28 range and 4.5 movement speed and a good firing animation and multipliers against artillery. And if you have falconets, you can at least match the range, but you can't do it with falconets and they out you can't do it with with gats and they outspeed your gats, so you're just fucked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're shorter range. They they do have one of the shortest ranges of the artillery class, but they're they're so nice. They they, they also yeah. have re they're also really fast while they're in limber mode. Like they're one of the fastest. Uh, so they're they're really fast in um in, they're really fast in their shooting mode. Uh, they're they're yeah. faster than most artillery in their shooting mode, which is a big deal. Yeah, and one of those marvelous aspects of Gatling guns is because you have the you know the six shots going out instead of one you don't do overkill nearly as much so you know one falco blast into a massive artillery and it gets that nice you know area of effect and all that but the individual shots going out into a mass of musketeers or skirms you're going to do way more impact because you're not overkilling mm -hmm. so it's a huge like it's it, you will it's it f fills the role of you know, anti art, anti infantry, better than any other artillery. Yeah. Honestly, in my opinion. All right, let's talk about the Napoleon gun. This is specifically Ooh, the yes. USA Napoleon gun that they get access to in H three by sending one of the New Hampshire Federal cards. Uh, I put it in D two. Yeah, I would put it no higher than C, and I think D is realistic. Like, yes, it's a... Like, if you look at it from a stats perspective, it's... Oh, you know, it's, 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 it's basically the merc... It's a pretty good cannon. It's the mercenary version of the leather cannon. It's pretty good. They're pretty mobile. But it is the fact of the matter that it requires a shipment to enable them. And, and for me, it's, it's not even yeah. that. It's the fact that that shipment is tied to New Hampshire. And yeah. New Hampshire has heavily gone out of favor uh, yeah. for, for quite a while now. It's severely outclassed by Maryland. Uh, it's outclassed, I think, by Tennessee and Kentucky. Yeah. The only one that you might even compare it to is Indiana, and I usually run Indiana. <laughs> yeah, it, it is... It is they also cost 500 yeah. coin, I think, unless they lower the cost at some point. Oh, uh, hold on. I've got the stats open for me right now. Where is ah. Napoleon? Uh, insert your uh, advert for the app here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, check out our app. Uh, it's it's uh, we, we have a Age of Empires 3 companion app made by Hellbunch. It's got all things Age of Empires, including stats and... Uh, all that good stuff in, in costs and upgrades and everything you could possibly think of in Age of Empires 3. Also consider uh, liking and sharing and commenting on this video, especially the sharing and commenting bit. It really helps this channel get on the ground and allows more people to see it. 
So yeah, it is 500 points. Yeah, it's 500 so points, which is ridiculous. Uh, you can't even afford five of these with an entire coin mine. That's, no. that's how expensive these guys are. You can only get four. You can at least get five of them. You can at least get five falconets with a coin mine. You need 500 wood to do it. But you can get five falconets. You can't get five uh, Napoleon guns with a single coin mine. And that's rough. Yeah, it's rough. It's expensive. And you have and Gatling guns. Yeah. You, yeah, and the <laughs> fundamental reality is, if you go New Hampshire, you're going New Hampshire for the, the factory. factory. Yeah, And you're sitting there, and I'm, would I rather send the Napoleon gun shipment or the Gatling shipment? And your answer is going to be rolling artillery for Gatlings. You wouldn't even consider the Napoleon gun shipment until after your first two charges off of rolling artillery. Mm hmm you wouldn't even consider it. Like, no, I've got the better shipment. And it's not until you're down to one Gatling on a shipment versus it's two or three that come through with that shipment. Another issue which I have with it, and this will segue into our next unit, is that it is the mercenary version of the Leather Cannon, but the Leather mm -hmm. Cannon is not stat-wise better than a Falconet. The advantage to Leather Cannons is that they're age 2 and the Napoleon Gun, being a mercenary version of that, is not available until age 3. So it ruins yeah. the whole point of the Leather Cannon. And with that, let's talk about the Leather Cannon, which is a weaker Ooh. Falconet. It has the same overall DPS on a on a, uh, like, uh, on a on a on a 3 damage per second basis, but lower area of effects, less HP, less range resistance, and most importantly, available on age early. Yeah, Where and another points? huge part of it is it's 300 Food, 100 wood. Yes, so food, wood. But where would you put that? The collectible. This is an A tier unit. Yes, I fully agree. Would you say right right here, less than Gatling guns, but more than Falconets? Yes, yes. Just because if you can get a good mass of... You can, because Sweden can get a good mass of these in age 2. Because we are talking mostly food cost here. And it, it partners so well with the Corollians. It does. And it's, it is such a scary thing to see your opponent roll out of the fog of war with, you know, eight of these things. And you can, they can do that. It's, they're cheap, they're light on, because they're three pop, so you don't need a ton of housing. Like, they are weaker than a falconet, but you get these in age two. These are, these are scary things to see, and it's a solid A tier. All right. Let's see. What, what's our next Falconet equivalent? We have horse artillery. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Now the th interesting thing is here with horse artillery is, from a statistics perspective, they are objectively better than a Falconet. Yeah, it's just like, Falconet, it, but with more HP, more speed, more damage, and more splash. I think too. Yes, but locked behind a H four. But locked behind H four, and they're also five hundred coin a piece. I think. Yeah, so for me, this is a B tier, just because while it is better than a Falc on paper, like, if you're one of those people that does post-imp start or whatever, then yeah, why would you ever bother with a Falc? But, but this is the, in th terms this tier of, list is mostly scaled towards a supremacy rather than yeah. treated games. And it, so it for does me, take it's, both 1v1 it's, and team games under the count. Yeah. So for me, Force Artillery is a B, just because while it is statistically better it, it that being locked behind h4 means you're going to get a lot less utility out of it i'm almost inclined to put it in the c tier but i, mm. I I'm, I'm not sure because i when i I'm, I'm trying to compare it to how i feel about the german falconet versus the organ gun. Uh -huh. and i would value yeah. the organ gun more than i would value uh, uh more, more than i would value horse artillery personally yeah so I think I'm going to put it in C tier, honestly. If you're okay. a Dutch player, you're probably cringing right now, but mm. uh, <laughs> we're not Dutch players. And Dutch is pretty a pretty special case in that they can just casually afford 30 of these, you know? Mm-hmm. Because they are more expensive. Uh, they uh, One of the other things about Horse Artillery is that they have a really, really long um, delimber animation. They take a long time to go to their firing animation mode. They do. Okay, uh, let's see here. 
How about light cannons for Howden and Shoni? Yes. Yeah, I agree. This, it, it yes, it's an H four, but it is the only it's, it's, only artillery in game that works as a falconet and a culve. Yes. In that amount of range, well, like, it, uh, this is an well, S. I, well, the, the flaming arrow as well. Yeah, and you can you know the, the snake sneak peek for where I'm going to be ranking them. <laughs> Honestly, just because the flaming arrow is everything that the the light, the light cannon is, but also available in H three, I'm kind of considering putting the light cannon into A tier instead. Yeah, A tier can work. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we're addressing both the uh, flaming arrow and light cannon here. The flaming arrow S tier. Like, this is an age three unit. It is a falc. It's a cold. It's, it's nut. This is so. It's it's only a falconet in age three, uh, but starting yeah. in age four, you can send an upgrade card, and then it just becomes a light cannon, basically. Mm, whereas at the on the flip side, a light cannon hat you don't need a card for. Yes. So and on the flip side, the light cannon you don't need a card for, but you need an H four for, which I think is you worse, do need an H four, which I think is worse. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. So we a light cannon is either low S or high A, and yeah, flaming arrows A S tier for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other uh, falconet equivalents? Um, do we want to talk sea jelly right now, or did you want to put that elsewhere? Uh, that was going to be next if I did, if we, if we ran out of falconet equivalents. Oh, Sebastopol mm -hmm. mortar. This is a falconet equivalent. It's available at age. Three. It is. It's an anti-infantry. It's just also an anti-building. All right, so the Sebastopol mortar. This thing was D tier. Uh, it used to be S tier when it came out because it could like one shot a two falc shipment. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it became D tier when they turned all of its multipliers into fucking nothing. Uh, and now it's kind of back, but nowhere near as good as it used to be, which is fair, you know. Uh, yep. I, I think a lot of Ethiopia players are kind of sleeping on this change, that the Sebastopol Mortar is, is back. You know, it, yeah. it's back, baby. Uh, that, that kind of thing. You know, get your Aubins on it. It's a tanky boy. This thing costs a lot of influence to send in Age 3, which I think holds it back a bit. Yeah. Um, but this thing is a fucking powerhouse, man. Yeah, so I'd say it's a solid... B I was gonna say tier. C tier. It used to be yeah. D tier before, but I think it's if if the influence cost on it wasn't so great, I'd put it in B. Yeah. I, but I think it costs a thousand influence to send, right? It does cost a thousand influence yeah. to send. So I think it, I think for that reason alone, it, it belongs in the C tier. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, let's talk about the C gel. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> Never has a unit been so polarizing between me and ever and all of my watchers. So let me be clear here. The two siege elephant shipments that India gets in age three is incredible. Because it's like the only age three shipment for a cold mortar unit in the game. Right? Yeah. Uh, it costs 250 food, which is not bad at all, because India, like, don't cost food for their settlers, so you're always going to have lots of food with India. Yeah. The two shipment, the, the two siege elephant shipment for India is very good. The problem is siege elephants themselves are very bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and that, that might seem weird, because they're like a culvern and a mortar that has five movement speed and a shit ton of health and you would think that that yeah. means that they're really really good uh the problem is that they have 28 range which is the same range as a falconet uh they can they don't outrange falconets like other colburn equivalents do and um and so as a result you know you have all this movement speed but you can't use it because you have to get within range of your opponent anyways in order to use the damn thing and then yeah. there comes the point where they are tanky yes but they have both the artillery and the light cavalry tag, which means not only are they countered by Colburns and other, you know, Colburn equivalent artillery, which, I mean, yeah, these guys counter them back as well, but again, 28 range. Uh, but most importantly is that they're also countered by skirmishers. And if you're, if a skirmisher mass gets close to one of these guys, they can one-shot it, potentially. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you have a big enough mass. More likely they're going to two-shot it, but, you know, it would take three or four shots to kill a falconet, for example. Yeah. Uh, so if we were just ranking the shipment, shipment's like an eight here. If we're ranking yeah. the unit, it's 
It's just like Do it's you? like a scene. I I think it's it's still useful because it's a Colburn, and it's like the only Colburn yeah. they have outside of consulates. So maybe cut the difference between the unit and the shipment itself and call it a B tier. Well, I I I was gonna say top of C, but yeah, we can put it in B, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, it, it's C B. I, I personally yeah. value I, I I personally value it a little higher than the German Falconet. It's true. Yeah. They are useful. I do find myself sh shipping them as India. The two siege elephant card that India has is very good, which does help these guys a lot, even though they are extremely expensive otherwise, and also cost six mm -hmm. population, despite the fact that they don't do any more damage to artillery than a normal Culver. No. That's that's the thing, is they do like forty damage with a with a four times. That's hundred and sixty. That's the same as uh that's the same as a cold yeah i'm actually thinking yeah i think more c now because top of c but c because they're with this latest patch they actually with the way the multipliers work out now they actually lose cold battles that's that's true isn't it um there's also yeah. um a little detail Mortar units, uh, mortar units recently, so th this is one of the few mortar units that could target normal units, they did like 40 damage a hit or something like that. Uh, yeah. but now all mortars can target normal units, so that takes one of the few things that was, that the Siege Elephant had over other mortars, despite it, you know, barely doing any damage anyways, and they can get, you know, basically inconsequential. Yeah... I think last time I put these guys in D tiers, so I, I I've come to appreciate the two siege elephant shipment a lot more than the last time I ranged these guys, but uh, they're still not great. Yeah, so I'd say tap a C. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's talk about the Haraka. Ooh, -hoo. there's an interesting unit. That one. These guys used to be S. Um, not so much anymore though. Yeah. They've they've become a kill all murder machine that would slay anything it touches to basically an infantry focused version of it. Which I, I think it's a, a Falconet equivalent, honestly. I think we should have ranked some murder. Yeah. I think they're a solid choice. You know, they're not the they're nowhere near as broken as they used to be. Um no. they do cost wood coin and they're like the only Inca unit that does, but I mean that goes for most artillery. Uh, but they, they service their job against infantry, they just kind of don't do anything else, and that's fine. They do win yeah, against our, they, they do win in mass against artillery, so there's that. Yeah. It, assuming you can get in range, assuming you can get in range, because they do have <laughs> Yeah, <range>. yeah, <laughs> that limited range of it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in B, I don't know about you. We yeah, might change that I agree later. with B. We might change that later. Okay, um, flamethrowers. Flamethrowers. Mm, I mm, the only it, artillery a, unit in this one of the only two artillery units in this tier list to not have the artillery tag. Oh wait, no, I guess three because Haraka as well. Yeah. There are three units in this tier list that don't actually have the artillery tag: Haraka, Arrow Knights, and flamethrowers. But they're still yeah. they're still artillery. Let's be real. Yeah, functionally, like, it, it's a hard one with these. Flamethrowers are so weird. They they're really weird. Are. Um, they're, um, it, they, they, they're, they shred infantry, they lose really yes. hard to cavalry, uh, but they, yes. they're weird because most, usually artillery loses to, like, hussar type cavalry that have high base damage, uh, but these guys have the infantry tag, so they actually lose hardest to, like, lancer cavalry. It's, oh. it's really odd. Yeah, <laughs> um, which which can get uh, which uh, they're they're very tanky as well. They're one of the few tanky mm -hmm. Chinese units. Um, they don't banner they don't uh, they don't uh, banner an army train. They batch train, which is a little weird. Um, yeah, but I like them, and I'm always very very fearful when a Chinese player decides to go oh. all in on flamethrowers. Yeah, and because they don't have that artillery tag, they are not countered by culls. Mm -hmm. You have to get so, down and dirty with them. And they're tanky. Yeah. I, I think they belong in the B tier. Yeah, I agree with B tier. I agree with B tier. Okay. Uh, I think that leaves 
Colburns, mortar. Uh, let's let, let's do let's do all the mortars and then we'll do the Colburns. All right. Or should yeah 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 let's do that. Unless you would rather do the Colburns first. I'm good by either way. Okay. Um, let's talk about the mortar then. Mortars got better it, it, in the most mortar. recent patch. It's a mortar. Uh, I think they got better in the most recent patch because they now do um, damage to normal units, which is yeah. a significant. Which is a significant deal. Uh, they do thirty, and then when you upgrade them to howitzers, they do thirty-seven, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So it's something that I had been whining about since I started playing this game back in 06, which is <laughs> why can't I attack units, like land units with mortars? Like I get balance, but it's just dumb. Now, these guys have 30 range on their, their anti-unit attack now, um, which is good. It's 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 important to know that they have 10 less range on their, their anti-unit attack than their bombard attack. And that's to deal with balance purposes with Colburns, of course. Yeah, uh, because yeah. you need Colburns to be able to, to to target them. These guys are cheap too; they're the same cost as Gatling guns. So, yeah, I think that the the new changes to mortars we might it might cause us to see a little bit more advanced artillery play, which I'm really excited yeah. about. I I kind of want to try it myself. I might make a video about it. Um, yeah. these, the, the problem with mortars, though, is that they have, like, the worst limbering animations ever. Oh, yes, they do. And when they are in fire mode, they are, like, the slowest artillery unit in the game. They are the slowest <laughs> unit in the game. Yep. Which is not so great. No. So, I would say before the patch, I'm on, a, like, looking at a C tier, but I don't say solid B tier, just because they do their job functionally, and, and the, with the, yeah, they have an added bonus yeah. against infantry now, which is nice. Yeah, they can, they're actually serviceable in battles now. Like if you're ta if you're building, don't build these guys just for the anti-infantry abilities because it's not as good as a falcon. It's but not. it actually gives them value in a battle. They do have now. four area of effects though, so that's cool. They do. They do a lot of splash damage. It's nice. But they're not as strong as, you know, if you're going anti-infantry, don't bother. But it gives some value in a battle. It's not just something you have to keep away from every everyone and make sure it doesn't get hit. Like, you can actually bring these in and do some damage. And they got that extra bonus against walls, which means he's with that advanced artillery card now. Yeah, the really mortars have gotten more relevant. The mortars have gotten more relevant in the game, but they're still not like, yeah. exceptional units. Yeah, so I could say you I know think, yeah, it I is think they're a very, in a very good spot in the game. Yes. All right, let's talk about uh, one of my least favorite units, the Morutaru, and I say that because I don't play Japan. Mm. <laughs> the Morutaru is a weaker, cheaper three pop version of the mortar. Uh, they don't have a limber on limber animation. Uh, they ju they're kind of like the other cannons; they just walk around and shoot. Um, yeah. but the, the real thing that's, that's, everybody hates about the mortars is, is because of the daimyo. <laughs> the daimyo yeah. will get into uh, the back of your base and the opponent, and they will train 10 of those guys. 10. <laughs> and then your base is dead. That's, that's the reason everybody hates the Mortaru. <laughs> Yes, they are. They are hated for that. They are better than the coal, uh, than the mortar, undeniably, only because of the existence of the daimyo. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. fucking hate these guys. Uh, I hate putting them, ranking them highly, because I hate them so much. But they are. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna rank them just under the top. Yeah, I think that's I think that's warranted. I think that's right. <laughs> Fuck more Utaru. <laughs> yep. Alright, let's talk about a more decisive one being the uh hand mortar from China. I hate these units with a fiery passion, mostly just because they're obnoxious to face. Not because they're dangerous. But because they're yeah. super tiny and cause huge explosions anyways that fill up your screen. Yeah, they fill up the screen, they make tons of noise, they're tiny, they don't do any damage, so it's just obnoxious. <laughs> so out of my personal feelings, F tier, hate them. Uh, <laughs> in terms of, uh, to, to an objective viewpoint, they're, they're not good. 
slight. Yeah, they, they, they train quickly, which is pretty unique for artillery. Um, the big problem with them, though, is that, y you know, one, you're, you're making a batch of five of them, and a batch of five hand mortars ain't no batch of five mortars. Um, no. But also, they, they've... they stick very far apart from each other when they're marching yeah. around. And it's very cav-friendly. Like, cavalry will have the easiest time uh, micro uh, coming in, microing, and just shredding your your, your hand mortar mass to pieces. Yeah. Uh, they, granted, so, they are a Culvern mortar equivalent, and it's like China's only Culvern mo mortar equivalent. Uh, and for that yeah. reason alone, they do deserve recognition in, in the C tier. I think. Rather than... Yeah. I mean, just they, because they ain't the no thing. Ethiopia... They ain't no Ethiopia Falconet or... Or, uh... Or... Yeah. Gun, you know? Yeah. I, I'd put them yeah, worse than the Siege Elephant, though. Yeah. Yeah, for me... Uh, me, personally, they're D-tier just because... Like, with their exposure to hand murders... Or their exposure to cam, all that. But low C tier, I'm okay with. The thing is, even though they do lose harder to artillery, to, to uh, uh, like, what is it? Um, they, they do lose harder to um, cavalry than other mortars. I do give them credit for being better against uh, culverns because they're spread far yeah. apart. And, you know, it takes culverns six seconds to do one shot, and you're only going to kill one of these guys. Yeah. So there's that, and I think well, that's, that's really that's terrible about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not great. Yeah, so yeah, I, I agree with the low C tier. All right. We kind of forgot to go over this earlier, but let's talk about the fixed gun for Volta. Mm. Yes. So another one which was S tier release with the uh, Knights of the Mediterranean. Uh, I'd say A tier. Were, I don't really think they were ever S tier. In fact, they've never been nerfed. They've only been buffed. Yeah, that's true. It's more just people didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say A tier. Really? I was thinking B. B? Okay. So, I'm okay with B. I, I, and we can, we, can, we can talk about it. Sure, that's why we're here. Um, yeah. But um, my... my... My personal energy, and I love I love these guys. I love making them. I love shipping the fixed gun shipment as Malta. Uh, they the thing is they they don't move, and they can they do outrange culverns, and you do need more than one culvern to kill them. You need two, um, at least just by themselves without any support. But they they. they they don't move, and as a result of that, you can technically kill them with one crossbow. Now, whether or not that's reliably going to happen is, you know, up in the air. But, yeah, I, uh, I would love to see the game where uh, Malta didn't make any other units except for the fixed <laughs> gun and they got within minimum range and we're just, you know, one crossbow plinking at it for five minutes. And it, they don't have a build limit, which I thought they would, when I, uh, uh, which was a very fun surprise when I discovered this mid-game and decided to build eight fixed guns outside somebody's walls. <laughs> uh, which that that was a very entertaining game uh, until he just made a bunch of mortars. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, they 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 don't move. Uh, they they're basically a heavy cannon that's available in H three that doesn't move and has to be made from the explorer. And yeah. I'm I'm cool with that. And they can refund. You don't get all of your resources back. You get ninety percent of them back. It's still solid. It's still solid. Yeah. Um. That's that's my personal opinion. Yeah, no, I'm good with B tier. Like, yeah, to me, it's the the unlike most other artillery, if, you know, in age three, like you were saying, it takes two calves to deal with these things. But at the same time, they are at launch. They were like this big scary thing, but now that the, the game the community is caught on to its yeah. behavior, it's it's like it's not a thing you want to see running into with a mass of skirms but good scouting realistically you're gonna know it's there like but if you get caught guys, unaware of... where these guys really excel i think is when you're fighting somebody's forward base because you yes. put this just in range of their forward base and it will just pling slowly and kill all the units it kill all the buildings one by one and they can't push in without risking their units and causing that fight 
And yeah. That's super valuable. Um, yeah. Like, these guys rock at dealing with forward bases because they apply so much pressure to your opponent. Uh, yeah. But they're also expensive. And they don't move. Yes. See, I think <laughs> Unless you're allied with the French. I personally use these more guys more than I use Falconets for Malta, so I'm going to put them at the top of the game. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, let's see. Our last mortar units, the captured mortar for the native units. Yeah, I... Ugh. Or D. <laughs> it... And yeah. The, the reason I yeah. say that is what native, which native civilizations really get benefit out of this. At least they're, I will say, at least they're available in the fourth age now instead of the fifth age. Oh gosh. Yeah. The fact of the matter that they now have access to them is good. But like, what it native, is necessary. But what native civilization actually make use of these? Aztec don't. Mm, they have the yeah. Aramite. Uh, and then Haudenosaunee don't, because they're just going to spam light cannons. Yeah. And then Lakota doesn't, because they're just going to use their war dance for siege. Yeah. And the the only one that could really, really feasibly make use of these guys is Inca. And nobody plays Inca. Yeah. <laughs> so, for me, it's like, it, it was an absolutely necessary thing for them to have put these in the game. Like, I'm really glad that they did, because yes. there are niche situations where absolutely. if That's they true. didn't have access to it, they'd be at a huge disadvantage. But the fact of the matter is, in a, in a normal game, unless you're dealing with really niche scenarios where your opponent's gone super heavy walls, and he's just all around, you know, being toxic. And you just need the mortars to start knocking down 14 blockhouses, basically. Unless you're dealing with that situation, you're not going to make these. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely D or F tier. Just because, like, you're not ever going to make them unless you're in that toxic situation. Mm -hmm. All right, now before we go, let's talk about the last mortar equivalent before we talk about the Colburns. And this is a Colburn mortar combo unit, and that is, of course, the Arrow Knights for Aztec. Um, which, I don't know about you, but I am personally going to rank as the best artillery unit in the game. <laughs> that does not surprise me. Uh... Are you saying yeah, that does not Aaron, surprise me because they're good or because you know how I feel about them? <laughs> both. <laughs> they're good. They are good units. I, for me, it's I've always found it personally a little silly that this one guy with an arrow is planking away at <laughs> further range than a culverin. Well, they're not further but, range than a culverin. They're 30 range. Okay, Culverin's further range than a falconet. Yes. It's a guy with an arrow. I mean, from a... But, you know, we have to dispel a little bit of disbelief here and just go with the fact that it's a game. And, <laughs> you know, hey. <laughs> okay, so, so let's talk about the Arrow Knight. It's a Culvern Mortar equivalent that's available in Age 3, just like the Siege Elephants and the Hand Mortar. Right, um, but yeah. what's, and I think, is, is the Mortaru locked till age 4? I think it is, right? Yeah, the uh, Mortaru is locked till age 4. Yeah. Uh, but the thing about the yeah. Arrow Knight uh, is that it's it's an archer unit yeah. with 30 range, and it has um, Colburn multipliers against ships, and it's got positive, it's got really high siege, and it has, you know, multipliers against walls now, which is even better than it was before. Uh, but what's yeah. really important about it is that even though it functions as a super high-range culverin that out damage that outranges uh, falconets, it doesn't have the artillery tag, uh, which means that it's kind of in the sweet spot where it's technically countered by falconets, but they never reach, and it's technically not countered by culverins because they don't have an artillery tag. So you have this culverin that beats all the falconets and also wins every cold war guaranteed. If you have a mass of arrow knights, it means that your opponent just cannot field artillery at all. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, it, what's, what makes them even even better is, is that they don't have any negative multipliers whatsoever. And they actually have pretty decent stand-and-fire DPS. It's about the equivalent of a longbow. 
uh, yeah. of, a, of a British longbow, but without any negative multipliers. So, I mean, like, if you have a mass of these guys, they can kind of dispatch of cavalry. They can't deal with large cavalry masses, and you will need some anti-cav. But, like, these guys can, you know, hold their own if, they, if like, a 5 Huss raid comes at them and you have a good 10 or 15 of these guys. They can hold their own. Like, you're gonna need, yeah. you're, you're gonna lose with some, some units, sure, but you're, you're gonna come out away with, with some units a lot. Uh, yeah. And because that they they also win against musketeers and skirmishers, like y you need a large cavalry mass to kill arrow knights. That is the only thing yeah. that stops them. They mostly are just due nuts. to the sheer range. Yeah, they are nuts. They get the sheer range on these guys. Uh, they also count as hand archers. So if you're lucky enough to get on the Florida map, which shows up pretty regularly in standard team and competitive play, uh, you can get the native techs and give them just and give them like even more stupid upgrades to their damage and uh, and uh, a, a villager multiplier if because why not and then they increase their siege. It's it's bonkers. It really yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, the Arnett so, yeah, is the uh, best yeah. artillery unit in the game, without a doubt. <laughs> I don't yeah, even think it's, it's good. close. I don't even think it's close. It's good. I, I, I would take. I would personally take flaming arrows over arrow knights, but oh, I you know. I would gladly trade any artillery unit in the game for in, in any civilization for arrow knights. And another uh, big yeah. uh, one of the one of the big things that makes Iron Knights really easy to mass too is the big button. You get a you get you can get a batch of like ten of these guys at the twenty minute mark really really easily, or you can get a seven. You can ship seven, or ship the support card which gives you six, and then hit the big button and now you have like fifteen. You know, they're yeah. they're really easy to mass up. They are very easy to mass up and a lot cheaper. Then, yes, uh, oh, yeah, cost. speaking of their price, they're food coin costing. They're the yep. only artillery unit in the game that's food coin costing. And you know what else is food coin, coin costing for Aztecs? Every unit every that they have. If you do Aztec mining. If, yes, if you do Aztec mining, every single unit in your military is food coin costing. It's wonderful. It's, it's great. It's perfect. Which means you're also going to be able to use Arrow Knights a lot longer than other people because, you know, if when the, when the trees run out and the factories get blown up, how are they going to get wood? Yeah. Alright, let's 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 talk about Culverns now. Alright. I, I separated them into three different types. I could have uh, I, I could have separated the mortar into mortars for every other unit and then Italian mortars because they have Royal Guard mortars and that deserves to be recognized, but... I mean, yes. it doesn't change anything about them. No. Let's be real. It's 10% extra damage. It doesn't. Who cares? It doesn't change the... <laughs> it's a better mortar, but it's still just a mortar. It's, it's just a mortar. <laughs> okay, Culverns. Culverns are expensive. They are expensive. They're the same cost as a Falconet, though, which isn't bad. Um, yeah. They don't do any damage to really units. They do do decent damage to buildings. Uh, but the, their primary purpose is that they have 34 range, which is greater than most artillery units in the game, and they counter every other unit here except the Arrow Knight. Yeah. And the Haraka. So I would call and them the solid A tier. I agree. As hmm? uh, actually, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put them at the top of B tier. Hmm. Okay. Because we have these Royal Guards here, and they 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 they're gonna go in my A tier. I think, unless all of them should go in the A tier. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay, culverns are the most important artillery piece in the game. Um, because yeah. if you don't have culverns, you are going to be subject to your opponent's culverns. There's there's yes. a thing that happens when both players pass artillery called the Cold War, which is where all the other artillery stay back and the culverns fire at each other, and whoever wins the Cold War is allowed to have artillery, and the other person isn't. Yep. And it's it is the most common artillery unit we'll see you will see in the game. Well, I think the Falconet is, is more common. I think the Falconet is more common. Um, if you're talking early age three, then yes. But if you get into later games, you see way more bulbs than you see anything else because it's all about trying to win that space. Yes, it's it's like it, culverns are like air are like dogfighters in in airplane yes. wars. You know, they give you the air supremacy. Dogfighters give you the air supremacy and allow you to use bombs. You know, 
and the culverns are the exact same thing, but for ca but for cannons. Yeah, it's all about winning. Like, yeah, it's not going to do the big damage long term, but it's all if you use them, you win that space, okay, I and then you can actually utilize it. I think I will put them at the top of B tier specifically because they they don't have good shipments generally. That's true. Uh, yeah, the only reason they're going in B tier and the Falcon is going in A tier is because Colburns don't have good shipments. They, they you can afford them just fine, uh, but you do have to afford them. You you don't really ship them too much. Uh, now let's talk about our two exceptions to this rule that are going into the A tier, starting with the Italian Colburn, which has the Royal Guard Cold, and I think a, a decent number of Colburn shipments as well. Not in H three, but uh, like a pretty good number of them in H four, right? Yes, yes, they do. Yeah. I think they get a I think they've got a four cold shipment in H4. Yes, uh, so does Malta. Malta has a four yeah. cold and a four falconet shipment, actually. <laughs> Malta things. Just Malta things, right? Uh so these guys are just culverins but with ten percent extra HP and more shipments. They're just better for Italy than they are with other sims. Yeah. But you know what's even better than that is the Malta one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Malta is the king of Colburns, and I'm going to put it over the Morita. Uh here. And the reason that Malta, I'm going to put this one over the Morita as well. The reason that Malta is the king of Colburns is because uh well, Italy's Royal Guard upgrade uh is an extra 10% boost to HP. Malta's Royal Guard upgrade is a 10% boost to damage. But then they still get a whole bunch of HP anyways because the Colburn is affected by Malta's uh, civilization Malta bonus of getting 2% yeah. HP with every shipment. So after five shipments, you have Royal Guard pulls regardless of whether or not you've researched it or not. Basically. Yep. And that um, goes all the way up to 50%. And so, yeah, it goes all the way... Well, it actually goes higher than that. It goes all the way up to... It, it, it goes all the way up to uh, 100%. If you send 25 shipments, age up to age 5, and then send 25 again. I thought there was a cap nope, that no limited cap. it. Just kind of, okay. No cap. I tested it myself. Alright. Uh, anyways. So, the, the, the Colburn here for Malta, it, they've got great shipments for the Colburn. They have a 4 Falc shipment. They have a 4 Coal shipment. I think they have a 2 Falc, 2 Coal shipment, even. Yeah. Um... They have great shipments once you get to age four. I wish that they had a coal shipment in age three, uh, but uh, that would be a little overkill, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because these guys, they get more, they get great coal shipments, but these coal shipments just do more damage than other coals and survive more hits than other coals, and that's all that matters. Yeah, it's the fact of the matter is that thanks to the mul thanks to the Maltese bonus, that you will. Always win if in a in a vacuum with e e equal micro and equal numbers, you will always win the call for. Yes. Because even if you're age three, that two percent means that you're gonna get one shot more on every single call than it take than they can. Exactly. And you're gonna win. All right. Now let's talk about the heavy cannon equivalent. Yes. There are six different heavy cannon units in the game. Um, and only one of them is going to make it into S tier. Uh, any guesses which one that'll be? I'm gonna guess that's the Papal Bombard. No, it is not the Papal Bombard. Oh. And the reason okay. is the reason I don't put. Let's talk about the Papal Bombard first, then. Uh, the reason I don't rate the Papal Bombard as highly is because it only Italy only gets one factory. That is true. That's that's the only reason. But they can get they can get these with uh, their Basilica. Uh, they yes they can they can get they get a, like a, a nice big shipment of them right yeah uh, you use the advan one of the advanced techs uh, so the papal bombards are they're basically like great bombards uh, but they have the deflection aura that saves them that 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 kind of protects your other artillery which is good and bad thing because yeah the, the good news is is that if you have culverns near your um, your little bombard you will win every cold war. The problem is that your enemy is just going to target your Papal Bombard with their culverns. Yeah. Because there's no point in it. And then, you know, you're going to lose your Papal Bombard and, you know, you'll have culverns, but, you know, what do you fucking do? You don't have any other artillery. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of a mixed bag. 
Um, they you can ship the papal ball uh, or uh, the the papal arsenal card for Italy in age four, which is a great shipment that gives it's them a, a charged action that has their no that does their normal damage but with seven area of effect, which is hilarious. And it's called like holy fire or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's called holy fire. There, it's great. Which is so great. <laughs> um, but the fact that they only have one factory, yeah, I think, just hurts them so much. It does. So. I'm going to go ahead and put these guys in the top of seat here. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is all of these guys except for one of them are age 4 locks. Which also sucks. Yes. Uh, what's your next guess for which one's going to... I, I thought I'm going to put in the S tier. The, other, the others are all debatable. And I'm going to have conversations with you. But one of them for sure is going in the S tier. And there's no, there's um... no debate in that. Great Bombard. No, actually. Okay. okay. Alright, so let's talk about the Great Bombard, though. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you put the Great Bombard, personally? Uh, Great Bombard, it's basically just a better heavy cannon, so I'd put yeah. that A tier. Yeah, they also train faster, too. Yeah, and they get Mosque Tech for an extra three, and they get oh, yeah. shipments, and it's you you can feel the obscene numbers of these guys. Where would you put them? Uh, higher than the Falconet? Lower than the... Or lo maybe I'd put them lower than a Falconet. Um, it's because it, well, actually, it, right, it, right, is right. it is less game-changing to see, that, you know, two Bombards roll into the scene than two Falcons, because... Even if you do an FI, Botto, Great Bombards, at that point your opponent's going to have holds. Whereas the you know semi FF or FF and the two Falks, you're gonna you get that tempo change. So the Bombard to me it's it's A tier, but it's not Falcon yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just really, what do you I, think? I, I I agree. I think it's no Falconet. It's better than the multi cold though. You're gonna see. Um, Ottoman Great Bombards way more than you're going to see multiple words, I think. Yes. Um, I, I fully agree with your assessment. I think that's a good assessment. Uh, I, I went ahead and moved the Mortarder down below the Colburn because I realized that wasn't fair to the Colburn. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, my next guess then is going to be Flying Crow. No, <laughs> not that one either. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I have no idea where you're going off of this for the S tier, then. Okay, yeah, this will be a fun because one. Because I, I was going off of, like, you can't get an H2, but personally, I think the Flying Crow is trash. It, it is trash in H2, at least. You want it to be at least H3. Uh, the reason you want it to be at least H3 is because by then, I think, I'm think i pretty sure it can one-shot a Falconet, which is really important. Yeah. Uh, which is a really important milestone for Flying Crows. Uh, but yeah, you're, it's, it doesn't, like, you can get these guys in Age 2 by building the Confucian Academy from the Discovery Age, but, like, you're better off getting the Summer Palace. Like, it's, it's way better. Yeah, way better. Uh, and, like, I, I, I'm inclined to put these in the B tier. Probably mid yeah. through. They, they are yeah, an important unit. That, yeah. uh, I see them more often than I see Flamethrowers. I see yep. them more often than I see Haraka. I don't see them more often than I see Orioles. Yeah. Say, I agree with mid B tier. Like, if you went by ages, then, you know, it's D tier and age two. Like, don't do it. It's a waste of your time. But, and once you get out of age three, age four, then, yeah, I'd say mid, mid, it's a mid B tier. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, the, the one that's going in S tier is the, the rocket for British. Oh, yeah, and I mean, rockets are great units. I can't, I cannot dispute that one. They, rockets are great. They have really high splash, which is really good. Um, the, uh, the there, there's one specific reason, but I'm gonna go over it last. They, but what's also really good about them is they, they pair really, really well with the British Musketeer, which is yeah one of the greatest benefits that they have. You know, uh, the other, the, the the other things that are really strong about all these S tier units is. Pairs well with the British Musketeer. Pairs well with the Ashtigarder Musketeer. Pairs well with Puma Spearman and and and, uh, and um, what are they? The Eagle Runner Knights. You know, uh, but the most important thing about the British Rocket that sets it apart from every other heavy cannon type in the game is that it doesn't have a negative multiplier against cavalry.
Uh, so you're getting the full, uh, full splash damage on Cap. Gotcha. You, you get the full Cav splash damage against Cav, which means you can charge Cav at it, you, you're probably gonna win, but you're gonna take some heavy losses, and you need Colds to deal with Rockets. And, uh, yeah. the Rockets also train faster, I think, than, than, um, than, uh, Heavy Cannons as well. I don't think they train quite as fast as Great Bombards, but they train faster, I think. 90 seconds versus... what's the Great Bombard train time? You are correct! They train 10 seconds faster. Than the Great Bombards? And, yeah, than the Great Bombards. Oh, yes, these are the fastest training Heavy Cannon, too. Look at that. Those are the fastest training, yes. Except You're for correct. USA. Oh, shit! I forgot to separate the USA Heavy Cannon from the normal Heavy Cannon. <laughs> Postscript, then. Uh, uh, USA Heavy Cannons OP. Yeah, um... I, I didn't- I actually meant to also get rid of the little bombard, um, so we're gonna pretend that this little bombard here is the, the heavy cannon. Perfect. <laughs> For USA. Alright, speaking of, let's start with the normal heavy cannon. Uh, towards the back of B2. It's good, they make a big- they, they make a big punch in the game. The, the two heavy cannon shipment is like H4's to Falconet shipment, but not quite as good. Yeah. Uh, they're good. There's nothing yeah. else to do. They're good in H4. They're scarier than horse artillery or falcs, but uh, it, it, they fill the role. They also it, take it, up so they, their B turn. They take but up yeah, your they factories. fill your pop space and you fill your factories. Now, USA heavy cannon. Pretend this is the USA heavy cannon. A minor mistake in, in the game setup here. Um, the yeah. USA heavy cannon is busted as shit, and the reason we're just gonna ignore the the little bombard is because like no nobody can train the little bombard except like the Dutch, I don't think. And they're just gonna yeah, make horse, and they're just gonna make horse artillery. Yeah. No, USA's heavy cannons are busted as shit. They get Nox artillery training, which gives them uh, like an extra twenty five percent HP, mm -hmm. uh, which makes them super tanky in age four. But more importantly, it also buffs the train time. Uh, but yeah. Ox Artillery isn't the only one that buffs the train time. So does Indiana Mobilization Act. Aging to 5, of course, just like all the other civilizations. But Aging 5 to Connecticut will, with Connecticut will also give you another card that boosts the train time. And you can, have, you can end up getting like a heavy cannon every 20 seconds with USA. Yeah, and, and it's that like it, it's like every four 40, too. It's like every thirty-five to forty seconds in H four with Indiana and Knox artillery training. It's a little stupid. Uh, they can it just is. spam heavy cannons, and there's nothing your opponent can do about it except put all of their economy on Colmans. Yeah, it is. It, it the USA. It is it, when you go through like it does take a lot of effort. And you have to go down a very specific path. You do. But long games, treaty games, anything along these lines, like you get into that point where you're pump ch punching out a heavy cannon out of each factory every 30, 40 seconds. It's a bit much. It is. Um, it, it, but because it is such a very specific path, I'm not going to put it in the A tier. Um, I'm going to yeah, put it but towards it's higher, the top. It's the definitely tier. higher than the normal heavy cannon. Yeah, I'm gonna put it above. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in, in towards the top of B, uh, above the Malta Falcon app, but below the fixed gun. Yeah. Do you agree with that assessment? I completely agree with that okay. assessment. Now, before we go over our last unit, the Quaker gun, do you have any changes <laughs> that you want to make looking at our overall tier list? Uh, I'm pretty happy with it right now. What do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so the Quaker gun. These guys cost 100 wood if you send a card with a specific age up in age four to make them. Uh, they have a build limit of 10. They only take up one population. They do zero damage at all. Uh, you can make mm -hmm. it look like whatever artillery unit you want, though, so that's kind of cool. Uh, if you don't want to send the Marion's Diversions card with the very specific H4 age up, which is generally not something I like to do, uh, you can instead get them uh, from the only other source USA has, which is a really good one, I think, uh, being the Infinite 5 Quaker Gun Team Shipment in age 4, which I actually mm -hmm. include in a fair number of my decks. Uh, but they are very restrictive in, in how you get them. 
you can get trainable access to them, so they are included here. Um, but yeah, they don't do that. They're hard to get their hands on. They don't do any damage, and really, I don't really think there's any place for them other than S. Yeah, it's it's in a hard <laughs> one with Quaker guys. Realistically, because... they should be right here and make everything perfectly balanced in the in the in the in the, in the tier list, but. Uh, I love these. I love these guys so much, and so I'm gonna put them in S tier. They should be at the bottom of C, but they're so much fun to use. And if you can use them, you, you can use them. You can use them in really clever ways to let them just win you the game uh, with a little bit of strategic planning. Uh, they, they they are the only artillery unit that can win you the game without doing any damage. Let's say that. Yeah, it's <laughs> they, they're incredibly useful, but only in very, like, it's one of the you have to be very careful with them. <laughs> you have to be very careful. It's one of the very few, very few instances in Age of Empires three where deception is not is it's an overt deception and you have to now, you're again, actively trying to deceive realistically it, it's not like give, even given yeah. their tactical use they should be here but i'm putting them yeah. here because of my own personal thing <laughs> it is your it is your uh tier list and but yeah the thing is they don't do any it, damage they do knock over trees though which is kind of funny um <laughs> my my favorite way to use these guys is to make them look like culverns um, because then the enemy can't make artillery, or they think they can't yeah. make artillery, and it also justifies, uh, it also justifies when your, your five culverns shoot into an infantry mass and nobody dies. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes it look really realistic, although I've definitely had some games where I make them look like heavy cannons, and just roll up into my opponent's base with, uh, five Quakers and, like, 50 regulars, and what does the auto player do? He makes, like, 30 cavalry units, and then they all die. <laughs> because he, he, yeah. he thinks he has Into to deal with... Regulars. Because he thinks he has to deal with five heavy cannons. That's that's what the Quaker guns are used for, right there. Um, yeah. And and they, they it's it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. They're not great. They, re they really should be in C, but I'm putting them in S. Yeah, it, they're, 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 they're the, the funkiest unit. It's like, if you look on paper, you know, they do nothing. So they're D, F tier, they're completely useless. But the strategic advantage of being able to force, force your opponent to make a mistake, and that's where the value is, mm. is you're forcing your opponent to make a mistake. Like... It, unless they have the you know wherewithal to know, hey, these might be Quaker guns. I don't have to deal with them, which who, very few people are going to have that level of game knowledge because to very, be able to see that. Because even fewer people both play USA and ship Quaker guns. Yeah, I think a lot of people. I think a, a, a lot more people should have been using this in the. Um, in the the Gatling gun spam era of the game, mm, where yeah. you know people would sh get Gatling guns in age four, uh, and then they would spam them out, but nobody would ever get Marion's diversions. Like you can make your mass look way bigger just by using Marion's uh, by using a Team North Carolina Quakers or Marion's diversions. And nobody did, and I thought always yeah. thought that was a shame because I probably would have quit a lot sooner had it looks like you had thirty Gatling guns than twenty, you know. Yeah. Or you roll in with, you know, 10 gats and 5 kolbs instead of just 10 gats. Exactly. At that point, it's like, well, how do I touch this mass? So, yeah, it, it's a funny one. Yeah. It's definitely its own weird little thing. It's one of the... They, they, so many strange things were added to the game with USA that are still unparalleled in game, and it's a wonderful thing. And this is one of those. Exactly. It's, I fully it, it's fun. Mexico can get them too, actually, using the Central America revolt. <laughs> fun fact. Uh, but I think that'll do it. Your three best artillery units in the game are the Erudite, the Flaming Arrow, and the the British Rocket. Uh, although India can actually get like a shipment of, uh, or not India, I think USA, or, some civilization is able to get a shipment of five rockets, which is hilarious. USA can get a shipment. It's the 
It costs a thousand food and a thousand wood, but you get five, and oh, yeah, is that it's a nice. Five <laughs> rocket shipment, it's fucking insane. Uh, it is a ridiculous thing to send in <laughs> and have that land. That's a five, you know, that is a five heavy cannon shipment, basically. It is a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah, the other Connecticut thing, speaking of Connecticut with the USA um, uh, heavy cannons, yeah, you know, the other thing that Connecticut also gives you besides, like, the heavy cannon train time? Uh, uh, they let you build one more Hulk. No, the, the other shipment is a three heavy cannon shipment. Yeah, it's a heavy cannon and a hull, right? No, it, it's three heavy cannons. Oh, it's two. It's just a better two heavy cannon shipment locked behind H5. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. USA and the artillery, man. They get the best heavy cannons. They get the best Quakers ever. Uh, they get the best Falconet equivalents and Gatling guns. They... They got good artillery. USA is an artillery sieve. It USA is an artillery <laughs> sieve. It really is. It Gatlings, uh, Quakers, yeah. It any is. any last words before we uh, quit out? No, I think that covers all of it. And yeah, artillery is my favorite part of the game. It's got the punch. It's got the weight. It's got the visuals. It's got the sound. It's just awesome. It is. It's. It to me, a artillery is what makes Age of Empires three. Age of Empires three beyond everything else, like beyond every other aspect that makes Age three unique. The artillery in this game is really to me what makes it the game, and my in my personal opinion, makes it better than all the other Age titles because. You get cannons rolling onto the field, and you've got bouncing cannonballs and explosions, and it's great. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to end the video than that, so without further ado, let Jalen Gentles and Lady Boom have a great day, and goodbye. Still my heart beats again and again, I'm always searching for a love with no sense within my head. Till that day when I see that I've met the most amazing demon ever yet.